So this is the third episode of the series on DIY electronics. I started this as a presentation at the Milwaukee Community Saline Center. And so if you feel like you want to um, give back a little bit, uh, how about making a donation to the, uh, to the Milwaukee Community Saline Center? So today I'm here on a parade and this next section is about these Raymarine or Auto Helm gauges. Now, these are early models. They're from 1996 or thereabouts. These are ST50s, the depth and speed sensor. And I have a ST60 plus wind instrument. Now, these came with the boat. The wind instrument was probably updated at some point, And I've updated the, uh, the actual wind unit at the top of the mast. But these are still very good units. I really like, even, uh, even though I've got you know, a, a wind instrument and a helm, I really like this analog unit. It gives you a really good visual anywhere on the boat. So I want to keep these, or at least I want to keep this. And even these I want to keep, but not necessarily show them off. But even so, what I need to do is need to get these gauges into, into Signal K so that I can display them anywhere on the boat. Now, I've already done this. It's been like this for five years or thereabouts. But for this section of the third video, I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, I couldn't do this at home because I don't have the gauges. So I'm going to do it right here on the boat. So when setting up CTALK1, you need a hardware interface and that hardware interface is one of these and that is an opto coupler. So it's an optical coupler um, that is used to connect the external CTALK network with the internal Signal K network or to connect to the GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi. So what you got on this connector is you've got two terminals on this side and you've got three terminals on this side. The two terminals on this side are connected to data on the input where it says input plus and then ground on this side. And on the opposite side you have VCC which is connected to a 3.3 volt pin on the Raspberry Pi output which is connected to the GPIO pin that you've selected for the data to go to and ground which is connected to a ground pin on the Raspberry Pi. So I'll go through that again. This side you've got the yellow wire from CTOK, so the data wire from CTOK and ground and on this side you have 3.3 volts from one of the GPIO, GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. Output here to one of the data pins, the selected GPIO pin for data, and then ground to a GPIO pin here. What you'll also notice on here is that there is a resistor here. Now th this device, this particular one I've bought, comes with a 4.7K resistor and that is not enough for what we need. So I remove this and replace it with a 10K resistor. So for your network, that might be slightly different, but generally speaking, go with a 10, try that. And if it works, it works. If you have the MacArthur hat, ignore all the hardware stuff that for, for this video, from this video, uh, the MacArthur stuff has this already built in. So you don't need to do this with the MacArthur hat. But it's very simple. In order to add a data connection from CTALK1 to Signal K, we have to first go into here and then open plotter and then go down uh, to find the GPIO app. 
if you don't have the GPIO app installed, uh, do what I did in the first in one of the earlier episodes and go to settings and then add it first. So now we, we click on CTALK1 input. And if you haven't installed Signal uh, CTALK1 before, uh, this is what it'll look like. You'll have nothing in there. I just deleted my entry so that I could redo it uh, for this video. So you press add here, uh, and then we're gonna call it CTALK. And we are going to select which library we're going to use. Now, if you're using an older system, you can use Pigpoid, um, but everything relatively new uh, should use GPIOD. Um, if you've got a Raspberry Pi 5, it must use GPIOD. And then GPIO, we're going to select which GPIO pin it is in our system it's it's this one it's gpio4 uh, which basically um, is this one here and we're going to press ok then with those we, we need to invert the signal that is something that uh, you should start with uh, and then later if it doesn't work undo this and, and see uh, if it if it fixes it but for me invert signal is what I need to do. Press OK and the signal K server should restart and now you see you've got this connection. Now we can go and look at this connection in uh, in signal K itself so I'm just going to open a browser here and go to server data connections and you'll see CTARC here click on CTARC and you say data type CTARC uh, enabled, yes. Um, ID CTARC, GPIOD, GPIO4, and invert signal. Okay, now what we're gonna do is go to the dashboard, see if we're getting data on that, uh, on that signal. And you can see there's some data coming in. We're getting 3.2 deltas per second. Um, so now we can take a look in data browser and see what we get in. If we put in CTALK in here, we can see that we're getting depth below transducer for depth. We're getting apparent wind angle, apparent wind speed, and speed through water, which is currently a zero, but we're still getting it. It's still sending data. So we're getting the data we need. And then when we look at that on, um, on our If we close this now, so we, we don't need this anymore, we're going to close it. And you can look, see here that uh, you can see with the wind data here and the speeds and everything coming in as well as speed through water. I do not have depth on, on this. I don't need it. The depth gauge is in front of me, so I, I just use, use that. But uh, we're getting all the data we need from that. And that's it's as simple as that. From a hardware point of view, um, it, it's relatively easy. I've showed you how to do that. Um, uh, so try it and see how you get on. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment.